This is, uh, <laughs> okay. So this is the body cam evidence of the day of my arrest. Now check this out. These lines, you know, I've tried various things to smooth them down. These lines were here. You see that? Crazy, huh? And yeah, and then there's uh, followed by some that are very deep. Let's see, like, like, uh, like over here. Hmm. Well, it sure looks pretty. <laughs> this light. Okay, so I, need, I just want to uh, look for signs that it really wasn't that new as the, uh, I believe it was an officer said. Look at the inside loop. That doesn't look new at all. So, yep. This is not a new CD. But I'm curious to hear more about that uh, new CD theory. Like, yeah. Anyway, bye guys. Since I'm having a hard time seeing the road, so I thought I would just, um, stop. <laughs> Since it's really hard to see. Not that I have anything thrilling to see, but I like to keep up with myself. Looking back here, I'm in a parking lot, somewhere in Arkansas. Actually, in like two and a half hours. And I keep stopping, but I'm also debating whether I really want to go home at all because it is quite hard to see. It's a dark night, other than the moon, huh? but it's quite dark. And uh, the country roads and everything are curvy. Oh my gosh, there's, there's wildlife. There's wildlife like crazy in Arkansas. This is the natural state. Mm -hmm. I haven't nearly come across, I haven't nearly hit anything tonight. This phone's about to die, so. I'll let you know where I go because inquiring minds want to know. Ciao. I had data and then poof, it was gone. And I cannot figure out, I've tried everything, figure out how to restore it. And this camera's gonna die. La -di da. What am I going to do? I still have my other phone that, uh, yeah, you know, if I make it to Heber Springs tonight, but this looks like a really nice place. And one more thing, while well, I'm trying to figure out what to do with my life and my night, I would say 99% easy of the time. Any man for sure has gotten mad at me. It's all over bullshit. It's like... It's another story, I'm just saying. What, why, did, why have I gotten so much of trouble in my life when I'm so damn adorable, you know? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> this is... Uh, <laughs> okay. So this is the body cam evidence of the day of my arrest. Now check this out. These lines, you know, I've tried various things to smooth them down. These lines were here. You see that? Crazy, huh? And yeah, and then there's a uh, followed by some that are very deep. Let's see, like, like a. Uh, like over here. Hmm. Well, it sure looks pretty. <laughs> this light. Okay, so I need. To, I just want to uh, look for signs that it really wasn't that new. As the, uh, I believe it was an officer said. Look at the inside loop. That doesn't look new at all. So yep. This is not a new CD, but I'm curious to hear more about that uh, new CD theory. Like, yeah. Anyway, bye, bye. Since I'm having a hard time seeing the road, 
So I thought I would just um, stop <laughs> since it's really hard to see. Not that I have anything thrilling to say, but I like to keep up with myself. Taking back here in the parking lot somewhere in Arkansas. Actually, in like two and a half hours. And I keep stopping, but I'm also debating whether I really want to go home at all because it is quite hard to see. It's a dark night, other than the moon, <laughs> but it's quite dark. And uh, the country roads and everything are curvy. Oh my gosh, there's, there's wildlife. There's wildlife like crazy in Arkansas. This is the natural state. Mm -hmm. I haven't nearly come across, I haven't nearly hit anything tonight. This phone's about to die. So, I'll let you know where I go because inquiring minds want to know. I had data, and then, poof, it was gone. And I cannot figure out, I've tried everything, figure out how to restore it. And this camera's going to die. la -di da What am I going to do? I still have my other phone that, uh, yeah, you know, if I make it to Haber Springs tonight, but this looks like a really nice place. And one more thing, while well, I'm trying to figure out what to do with my life and my night, I would say 99% easy of the time. Any man for sure has gotten mad at me. It's all over bullshit. It's like, it's another story. I'm just saying, what, why, did, why have I gotten so much of trouble in my life when I'm so damn adorable? You know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was returning from Little Rock because I have joined a scientific study and I was screened um, for the study like for hours in Little Rock that day and then I went uh, shopping for a while and so it was quite dark, well, actually it was 10.30 p.m. by the time I decided to uh, stay in Hebrew Springs for the night. <clears throat> Alrighty, so I was still just like, waiting for my ch phone to charge. I was halfway between sleep, sleep and awake, you know, and probably, yes, um, I do think I dozed for less than 30 minutes, right? So when I saw the bright lights behind me, there was a moment of confusion. Then I soon realized it's the police. I, I hope I'm not breaking the law, I thought. So, oh, anyway, I just kind of, yeah, I just kind of sat there and wondered, you know, they're probably going to tell me to move in. I'll explain to them about the phone. And <laughs> I really didn't feel like I had done anything wrong, but um, let me continue. So when I see the bright lights behind me, I soon met um, Officer Moore. He asked my name and for my paperwork. I gave him everything, insurance, life, and, and soon he saw my pipe. It was under the dashboard ring. Yeah, he saw it. I left it out. Um, before I begin with the uh, police story, I want to note that I was completely coherent, cooperative, polite, and respectful the entire time in the meeting when I had to... Uh, and get my car out of stores and that mean guy. Whoa. I overheard the lady at the dispatch inform the officers that my record was completely clean. Yay me. Officer Moore searched my car very, very, very thoroughly as far as I could tell. I was very thirsty from my medications but ate in the car. Now I want to mention that I asked and begged for water constantly for
water hours, and I was promised water, but never given it until I was in my jail cell, and then I could drink from the faucet. My dry mouth was soon obvious and debilitating. It was like, like this, all right? And it was obvious, and I couldn't. <laughs> I mean, I just couldn't. Have. But it never is that bad because I'm always drinking. It's, you're, it's never, it's never been that bad that I ever remember in my life. My dry mouth was soon obvious and debilitating. My lips were sticking to my gums. I could barely talk. This thirst was literally torturous. I have never been so thirsty in my life because I constantly have fluids near me, always. I could soon see that um, depriving me of my basic need of water was a uh, power and dominance tactic. I am absolutely certain on this point. So until my cell, I begged every few minutes, I was promised water many times by the four officers that I encountered, and I was never given a drink. Officer Moore uh, didn't find any contraband in my car, in my van. I gave him what I had, less than one eighth ounce of marijuana. Before I even left my van, he confiscated my, confiscated my driver's license and said I would get a temporary license. Then while the other officer searched my van, Officer Moore began interrogating me. No Miranda rights given at any time. So, how much meth have you done today? I haven't done any meth. Where are you hiding your meth? I don't have any meth. How much meth do you do? <laughs> I don't do meth, just weed. What other drugs do you take? Uh, prescribed. So the interrogation was basically over. And uh, yeah, he's not supposed to, uh, he can't use those against me, for sure. I'm not giving my Miranda rights, but yeah. So I was never given any rights, and I didn't know as we were performing a series of tests, it was obvious that Officer Moore intended to take me to jail. I was certain that he was trying to make me fail, and I was certain that he was enjoying his dominance over me while giving me constant instructions. Um, I've also read since then that sobriety tests are not meant to be passed. <laughs> Surprise. It's like catch-22 everywhere. Right? The main reliable test for intoxication is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out the official name, the follow the pen test, right? while he shines a flashlight towards my eyes. Okay, that is the main test that can determine if you're uh, sober or intoxicated. And uh, he did it for a long time. He did it as far out as he can, you know, really straining my eyes. I'm not, I'm not even joking. And uh, really high up in me, you know, so... So strain my eyes for sure, um, and then he did it twice, right? Seems like there was another two, so I put my head up, but since I'm not sure, I'll leave it out. Okay. Anyway, I passed. Okay, so here's, here's me. I'm exhausted. I'm scared. Um, I'm worried. <laughs> I am suffering from severe dry mouth. All right. I'm wearing a tank top with no bra, and it, and it is revealing, right? Um, I have no shoes on. Shall we continue? <laughs> As he began demonstrating the next um, sobriety test, walking a straight line, 
know, heel toe, heel toe, nine steps, little tiny baby turns, heel toe, you know, nine steps on this line, on a slant, by the way. Okay, nine steps back. Okay, I understood everything the officer was telling me throughout this too. I was completely understanding of the test. I was completely, you know, not. I mean, just, I just wasn't embarrassed. But I did tell him that I may have a hard time with the balance test, uh, the balance exercises, because I have had dizziness every day for the last six months. Also, <laughs> um, my station tube uh, had been clogged for the last two weeks. And traveling with the windows open, no air conditioner, you know, that do that doesn't help, right? It was very clogged and my ear was hurting, actually, but I didn't get to say all that. I just tell him about the dizziness and I lasted just six months and that my doctor is aware of it and we have not got it under control at this time. So he heard, but he didn't care. <laughs> After all, he intended to take me to jail. Perfectly, I performed the nine-step test. Anyways, in spite of the dizziness and stuck in you know, the... It's not like I'm dizzy constantly. I'm dizzy a lot and throughout the day and every day, right? But even if you're not dizzy, there's kind of like a fuzziness that feels like being tired, you know? And so if I turn my head too fast this way, I get dizzy. I have not slept on this side um, in six months because I can't. The room starts swirling. So uh, yeah, it's real and it's there and it's, it, it affects my life. I understood his commands perfectly. I passed. I passed. Again. Most importantly, we were on a slant for both of the balance exercises. I think it was a wheelchair ramp, and there were some yellow lines across. We did the walk the line. Definitely, we were on a slant. He, he knew that, uh, but uh, he, he's going to lie about this. I suppose it was a wheelchair ramp um, for Ace Hardware. This is important. First, it demonstrates that these were no ideal conditions uh, for my uh, sobriety test. Or any, sorry. Neither was my dizzy condition. Second, Officer Moore lied about being on the slant for the second balance test when we go to the station. He lies about that. He said, we were only on the slant for the first balance test. Then we moved to the sidewalk. Huh? I would have remembered that for sure. And so would he, but I mean, he just made it up. No, sir, that's incorrect. We did both the balance tests in exactly the same place. Um, there was really like, I don't know. I don't know. There was really no reply after that. Or I think he said, I don't want to debate you. Good at proving, um, I'm not good at proving that somebody lied to me or uh, that they cheated. If it's an officer, I'm not really good at that. But you know, I'm good at logic and I'm good at debate. He demonstrated the third test. I could see his advantage with those great big enormous shoes he had. They weren't going anywhere, right? foot six inches from the ground and stay until I tell you to put your foot down. Um, I was worried about this one because as I previously told him the dizziness, um, I didn't mention the slant at that time, but definitely there was that, but uh, I had no practice. I can do balance exercises with practice, but I, at best, this one is only 65% accurate. 65% of the people uh, pass it, it means that it's 65% accurate. You can tell if you're wasted or not. <laughs> okay, so I had done everything perfectly until this. I did not feel stoned or, or intoxicated in any way, 
just scared, embarrassed because of my clothing, agony over intense thirst, and I knew this test was going to be difficult for me. Okay. Research at home informed me that this very test, in the best of conditions, was only 65 And destruction of thirst, nervousness, awkwardness because of my clothing, um, clogged a station tube, and the environmental conditions of being on a slant put the odds against me, along with the absolute knowledge that he was trying to bust me. And I read twice at home that sobriety tests are not meant to be passed. Go figure. So I tried. I could only uh, keep my foot up for a few seconds. Um, can't use your arms for balance. And uh, yeah, started hopping around. He said, you're intoxicated. You're under arrest. Bing. Everything perfect until that 65% accurate test on the slant made me on everything. I was jumping through all those hoops, you know, with no bra on, you know. Cloudy station to you, right? I did it all until that. I begged him to try again. No way, Jose. I asked him to allow my sons to pick up my van. No, it's going to end. Constantly asking everyone for water. After this, after that, after, 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 you know, or in a minute, or yeah, you gotta do this first. Um, but not one person kept their word. Um, it's all about control and dominance. Treated my, me like a criminal from that time, from that time forward, right? And I'm innocent until I'm proven guilty, no officer knows that ever, ever. I also told four officers, including Officer Moore, that I believe the sobriety test was unfair. I, nobody cared about my needs all this time, or what I said, or any defense. Um, you know, nobody cared, right? <laughs> um, there was a generalized feeling of coldness. Accommodating people were just, they live there. <laughs> they live there at that jail. Okay. Um, nobody, nobody gave me a phone call. And can't, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> All right. I knew I would pass, um, yeah, because I certainly, I don't like to drink very much, hardly at all, and I certainly didn't that day or on this trip, but really, I mean, any trip, I'm not going to drink, right? So anyway, I took the blood test twice. I think that's standard, right? And uh, I passed, but no snaps. You know, he doesn't say, yeah, he doesn't tell me how well I'm doing. <laughs> right. okay. So um, while, uh, either while Officer Moore was explaining the next test or uh, before or whatever, during our 15 minutes, we had to wait for the next blow test. Um, I discussed with him the unfairness of the sobriety test. Let me do it now on this flat surface. No. <laughs> no. Besides, we only did one of the balance tests on the asphalt. We moved up to the sidewalk to, uh, for the uh, stand on one foot one. Sir, we did not move up to the sidewalk. Both the balance tests were on the slanted asphalt. I spoke quietly, calmly, and respectfully throughout the entire time. I'm just throwing that in because that's how I was then and that's how I was throughout. Basically, I was exactly where he wanted me to be. No turning back. No reason possible, no compassion. Um, that's, a, yeah, gone a long time ago, right? And then, uh, okay, then um, he explained the urine test. Okay. He explained the urine test, all right. He, kind, he read me uh, this uh, paragraph on the urine test, right? Uh, whatever it said, right? Um, and I'm not seeing now that he didn't explain correctly. What I understood was that if I refuse, I will get my license taken away and go to jail, right? 
understood. Oh yes, and also that the concentration of my urine is very concentrated. It's going to equal a DUI anyway, right? So um, after he explained those things to me, and that's what I understood, um, he asked, will you take this test? No, sir. Now, he's not supposed to ask me the reason because he didn't read me my rights, right? Okay. But at some point, um, inquiry minds, whatever, soon after I said, um, I'm already in jail and my license has already been taken away. I don't see, you know, the difference in taking this test uh, and basically giving more evidence. Um, I don't see the difference, you know. <laughs> I could not see the difference between taking the test and not taking the test. Right? Okay, so right here, right now, okay, if there was any clarification that could have been offered on his part, the results for not taking the test, I understand now that uh, they're more se severe than what I was already facing. One more point on this, um, or we'll see how many more. <laughs> okay. Okay, so also it was the uh, THC content, right? And I didn't probably, I didn't, I know I didn't verbalize this part to, to him, but I don't know the concentration of my THC, right? Um, so that, that would have been DUI if I took it and DUI if I didn't, quite possibly. But either way, what I do know is that there was THC in my uh, urine. There's no doubt about that, so I'm guilty of having there be THC in my urine. The thing is, THC detected in the urine, right? Uh, you can't tell when it's from. You can't. Um, it doesn't go out of your system, right? Uh, in four or five days, or in several weeks, and so uh, it doesn't say anything about my content for that night, or um, you know how under the influence I was for that night. So I think, so how am I feeling after I said that and after all this, right? My thoughts. This man intended to take me to jail. He lied to me um, on several occasions. I was already making a mental list of his lies. Okay? Especially, you know, five or 10 minutes ago about the uh, that we were not on a slant. He made me fail the last test. He lied many times about, you know, he will give me water after this, after that, you know. As well as everybody else, right? I had been completely cooperative, clear in my communication. Um, he was treating me like I was guilty. The entire time, you know, before I'm out of the car, you know, he had already taken my license from me at that time, before I was out of the car. Even though I was neither intoxicated, nor did I have any intention of driving until the light of day, um, I guess that's it. I was neither driving nor intoxicated. I'm not going to plead guilty to a DUI, right? Plus, when he mentioned concentration of the urine, um, that that could amount to a DUI. You know, I had no idea what my urine concentration would be. I was tired of helping this uh, controlling, lying, uncompassionate man find evidence against me. Try to, anyway. I admit now that most certainly there would be THC in my urine. As you know, THC could be detected for weeks or even months later. Um, this test would reveal nothing about my current intoxication or lack of intoxication. Um, I did not completely understand that refusal would result in too much more consequences than I was currently experiencing. I was in jail. 
I write most most likely? And um, they had evidence against me. Uh, they took away my license. Fines were coming. My car's in impound. You know, they had a. Uh, you know, I couldn't see that there would be a huge difference. And I'm telling you right now, there was THC in my urine. <laughs> right? There. I just I just took the test right here. Finally, I just didn't feel like peeing in front of another person. I had had enough humiliation for one night. No compassion, no water. So it's onward to my cell which was, in fact, solitary confinement, cell, steel door, locked out windows. And it lived up to its name, because here I would soon find out what it's like to be ignored for many hours, treated guilty by all. And, and I learned very quickly that in a minute means never. I have already forgotten all about you. So I'm in my cell, and, um, and, and last but not least, I, I was denied my phone. And that's the time I just broke down crying. Do you need anything? 